psychiatrists, psychologists, psychotherapists, hypnotherapists are entitled to form psychiatric diagnosis. They are competent in this. It means that all these professionals have the same standard of diagnosis since there are not uh, some special lower standard of diagnosis assigned to non-medical mental health professionals such as psychologists or psychotherapists. It means that psychologists, psychotherapists, hypnotherapists know this standard of diagnosis very well and can offer their opinions on it. Standards of care of psychiatrists and psychologists in the United States and Canada are the same. And the, uh, there cannot be special standards of diagnosis for the province of Ontario. It means that Dr. Spanier, Steiner, Joyce Myers, my experts, are qualified to offer an opinion on the standard of diagnosis of psychiatrists practicing in Ontario. They were asked to opine only on the diagnosis of Drs. Graz and DF. There wasn't any treatment. Uh, they are qualified because they are entitled to form psychiatric diagnosis and no standard of diagnosis of psychiatric diseases very well. Did the trial judge err in finding that the evidence of Dr. Sugar, expert of Drs. Gratzer and Diaf, was true and reliable? In summation, Dr. Sugar stated in his report that psychiatrists were not taught about use of electronic devices as mind control weapons in universities, it was not an area of interest in medicine and psychiatry, and there wasn't literature about psychotronic devices in medical libraries. Dr. Sugar noted that um, these were reasons why psychiatrists didn't know about uh, psychiatric, uh, sorry, sorry, psychotronic weapons. It's not true. Some universities, for example, Sonoma University, teach on possible use of electronic devices as mind control weapons. If Dr. Sugar teaches his students to form their diagnosis only according to obsolete DSM-4, ignoring all the other medical li literature, it may be called criminal practice, but not standard of care. Electronic microwave devices used for mind and body control are of enormous interest in medicine. There are thousands of books and articles in Medline Library regarding this issue, hundreds of patents and declassified documents. Psychiatrists can easily find information about psychotronic devices in medical libraries. Dr. Sugar notes in his report that no psychiatrist would be expected to examine a patient for the effects of electronic weapons attacks. It's not true. I went to the RCMP headquarter in Newmarket in January 2010 and asked RCMP officers one more time to start investigation of this crime. Officers demanded letters from psychiatrists with the results of examination for the effects of electronic weapons in order to start investigation. I answered that my psychiatrists did not assume existence of these weapons and I couldn't provide RCMP with these letters. It proves that psychiatrists are expected to examine a patient for the effects of psychotronic weapons. Report of Dr. Sugar contains a lot of factual mistakes and as a, as a result of negligent work is inadmissible. It may be called only one word, a fake. His evidence, argument, facts are fake. So his, his conclusion that doctors Gratze and DF meet or exceed the standard of care is a fake as well. Nobody can accept false conclusions based on fake facts and arguments. Dr. Sugar, who has never heard about psychotronic weapons, even virtually cannot be an expert in this case about uh, use of psychotronic weapons. And now I want to read you endorsement of Justices uh, Sharp, Kronk and McFarland uh, of Court of Appeal for Ontario. Uh, endorsement. 
the appellant appeals to summary judgments dismissing her claims against two psychiatrists for negligence. In our view, both appeals must be dismissed. The motion judges correctly identified the issue as being uh, whether there was a triable issue as to the alleged negligence of the defendant psychiatrists. It is well established uh, that to establish a breach of the standard of care to support a claim for medical negligence, a plaintiff is required to lead expert evidence of a physician practicing in the same field as the defendant attesting to the defendant's negligence. Uh, the respondents provided uh, the evidence of Dr. Sugar, a qualified expert witness who swore that the respondents had not fallen before the standard of care in their treatment of the appellant. To avoid summary judgment, the appellant was required to adduce some expert opinion evidence from a qualified psychiatrist supporting her claim that the care she received fell below the applicable standard of care. None of the dependents the appellant offered were psychiatrists qualified to practice in Ontario or qualified to provide expert evidence on the applicable standard of care in Ontario. Without any evidence that the respondents uh, had fallen below the standard of care uh, that applies to them, the appellant's claim had no hope of success. Both actions were properly dismissed by way of summary judgment. The material preferred as fresh evidence relates to the theories of practices of certain people who are not psychiatrists and, and even if admitted, would not affect uh, the outcome of these appeals. Um, so, uh, the appeals are dismissed. Uh, it's not true. Uh, theories, uh, uh, justice is meant theory of Dr. Uh, William Reid is a theory of a forensic psychiatrist um, who lives and works in Texas and was a past president of the uh, American Academy of Psychiatry and Law. And this theory proves that um, non-medical mental professionals who are entitled to form psychiatric diagnosis uh, have the same standard of care as psychiatrists. Uh, it means that they know the standard of care perfectly well and can opine on the diagnosis formed by psychiatrists um, because there cannot be any law or other standards of diagnosis for uh, psychologists um, in comparison to uh, standards of diagnosis of psychiatrists. So uh, I want my decision is to um, apply for um, leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada.